Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the fourth day of the International Webinar on Advances of Science in Education, jointly organized by Research Consultancy and Development Cell, Government Sampai College, and Mizoram Science, Technology, and Innovation, Innovative, Innovation Council, MISTIC. As we have all witnessed, uh, the, the, the webinar has started since Monday, that is the 8th of March, and it will be continuing on till the, 8th, uh, till the 13th of March, 2021. Uh, for today, uh, that is the fourth day, we have again two uh, speakers, and, uh, it, and I would like to uh, introduce to you our first speaker for the day. Dr. Samuel Lelmuan Oma. Dr. Samuel Lelmuan Oma is an expert in the field of machine learning, biomedical and computer network security. A 2011 MCA topper from Mizoram University, he completed his PhD from Department of Mathematics and Computer Science, Mizoram University. He is currently working as an assistant professor in the Department of Compu uh, Computer Science in Government Sampai College, while also being a co-researcher in the Department of Mathematics and Computer Science, Mizoram University. His recent involvements include acting as an editorial member, reviewer member ad hoc for several journals around the world, and also teaching and guiding students and researchers within the field of application of medicine, machine learning towards the advancement of biomedical research and practice, focusing cancer and the COVID-19 disease. Uh, Dr. Samuel Lelmuan Oma has nine publications to his name and has been a reviewer for 31 scientific journal. He is also the editorial board member for Journal of Artificial Intelligence in Medical Imaging, which is based in the USA. Now may I welcome you, Dr. Samuel Lelmuan Oma, with his title, Application of Machine Learning Toward Advancement of Biomedical Studies. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Today, in this morning session, uh, we're going to discuss about the applications of machine learning uh, for the advancement of biological studies. So, uh, in the last session yesterday and the day before yesterday, we have heard about a lot about this biomedical studies, especially this cancer. So today, uh, we're going to add up with the uh, dry lab machine learning, the applications of computer science in the advancement of these biological, uh, biomedical studies. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the organizing committee for uh, organizing such a wonderful time, like webinars in such a, under a pandemic situation and in a busy schedules. Organizing uh, these kinds of uh, international conference and webinar is a time consuming, but uh, they used to uh, uh, organize nicely. And I am also being invited to uh, give lectures on the applications of machine learning for the education, uh, but to uh, tackle that we used to apply, uh, I used to present these applications of machine learning instead of that. So today, uh, I will introduce about, first of all, uh, what is exactly the meanings of this biomedical research and studies. Uh, after that, we will discuss about what is the meanings of this machine learning. And in machine learning, uh, we will discuss about the types of machine learning, general characteristics and components of machine learning. And after that, we will uh, head on to the uh, recent paper which we have published uh, about the uh, applications of machine learning for uh, breast cancer recurrence predictions and followed by uh, and concluded by uh, the recent paper which we have published in the same year, 2020. Uh, which is the applications of machine learning for to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, now, let's start on the introductions of biomedical studies research. It, with reference to WE 2003, uh, this biomedical studies is the applications of some basic uh, medical research and clinical uh, medical research uh, based on the combinations of three important components, which we call as the independent variables, and uh, variables, uh, dependent variables, and the subject uh, Z. So this is the place where we're going to apply this machine learning. Uh, the independent variable will be act as the, uh, the input data points, 
And this dependent variable will act as the labels for the uh, supervised learning. And uh, that will be for each subject Z. And the next, uh, first of all, I will not mention much about the biomedical studies, but what I like to mention clearly is that uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, challenges in biomedical research, especially for recent uh, COVID-19 and the cancer research. So in that one of the, I want to point out the major important uh, uh, challenges, uh, which is uh, commonly faced by the researchers all around the globe is that an early detection of any disease, be it uh, infectious or non-infectious is critically an important task. It means that <clears throat> screening uh, or detecting uh, some, uh, if, uh, some uh, disease before they used to cause symptoms is, uh, very, very critical. So it's not only uh, improve or save more lives. Uh, in the second line, it is complemented that uh, fast diagnosis and, and screenings of the process helps prevent the spread of uh, pandemic disease like uh, COVID-19 SARS-CoV-2. And it also cause effective and also speed up the related diagnosis, which comes uh, to be on the queue for the diagnosis. Okay. And the uh, solution for this is already been observed by the researcher like Dave Port and Kolokata, uh, Kolokata in 2019. So they have stated that uh, recent study that identified machine learnings and AI uh, are promising technology, which is employed by various healthcare, healthcare providers. Uh, it's uh, not only uh, uh, effectively screen out uh, or let's say predicted the uh, based on the resultant models, but also results in uh, a bit better scale up as well as speed up the processing power with a reliable uh, environment. And in complementing that, in 2008, uh, it is mentioned that internet theory uh, is uh, this uh, line is going to solve the internet theory, uh, like the AI is going to uh, replace the human interventions and all. Uh, so here, uh, the researchers uh, Philips in 2000, 2008. He has mentioned that in medical industry, AI and machine learning is uh, not applied to replace the human interaction, but to provide decision support for clinicians on what they are modeled for. There is a long time back, there is an internet theory which states that uh, the applications of this AI going to uh, control the human, uh, let's, let's say the human uh, and those devices which are uh, uh, governed by this AI technology, but things are not like that because this AI devices is uh, developed as an expert system in diagnosis, the diagnosing the uh, bio, in in diagnosing in biomedical, biomedical studies, uh, not to uh, let's say uh, replace the uh, physicists, but it, it is designed to complement the decision as a decision support based on the expert system. Now, let us move to the introductions of the machine learning. Machine learning is a branch of an artificial intelligence. Uh, the main idea is to relate the problems of a learning from the uh, data samples, that is independent data points, and uh, to, gener to the general concepts of inference. And every learning process or every uh, machine learning algorithms used to come with a two uh, phases. Uh, the first phase is that estimations of unknown dependencies. This is very, very important. Machine learning is like a, like a person, like a child. A machine is like a child with no, uh, which, receive, which doesn't receive any training previously, but we need to train them if we want to, so we want them to solve some problems. Until and unless they know or train to solve their problems, then they cannot solve their particular problems. Okay, so, uh, these estimations of unknown dependencies is only happens during the learning process. Sometimes we used to call it as training phases. Uh, uh, during this time, the machine learning used to learn from the supplied data, be it the supervised or unsupervised learning and generate some profile based on that independent variables. And after that, they use this, those the baseline profile and predict uh, the output uh, from the input taken from the uh, uh, patients. That is the subject. And next, uh, an introduction to machine learning again was that uh, we usually classify those uh, uh, machine learning into uh, three categories. The first category uh, is uh, supervised learning, and the second point is uh, unsupervised learning. And in third, we have 
uh, semi-supervised learning. So let us talk about the meanings of this supervised learning. Uh, in supervised learning, the machine learning need some label data. That means that we used to supervise the um, algorithm to do a specific task. Okay. So if you go have a closer look on the input row data here uh, in the, from the image, you may notice that there exists some circle which is a green, a greenish color, and there is a triangle which is uh, with a red color and uh, with a purple colors of a square. So uh, in supervised learning, uh, any algorithm which is uh, categorized under supervised learning need to undergo a training with a labels. Means that uh, in the algorithm section here, uh, if we look at closely, then there, there is a training data set and desired output is there. Uh, by uh, giving some rules and some input of data, then we can train that if there is three sides of image uh, uh, observed in the data, data set, then you need to think like it is a triangle. So if there is any classification, like uh, any images like ovals or which is not a square or which is not a three sides, then uh, the machine, we can supervise like this is a uh, circle. And likewise, if uh, we, can, we, can we can train the system that if there is a four-sided image present in the raw data, then you can classify as a square. Likewise, uh, in supervised learning, that means that we need a training data which is properly labeled with a quality class. And next we have unsupervised learning. Uh, in contrast to that supervised learning, in unsupervised learning, uh, we don't have any notions or output during the learning process. That means that we don't have any labeled training data. The, it is up to the algorithm that uh, to decide itself based on the input uh, attributes and features to group the uh, features into, uh, and uh, let's say the a classification uh, features for the output data. So there is no training, but some learning activities has been done in this unsupervised learning. And next is that we have uh, semi-supervised learning. In semi-supervised learning, we can combine both the two uh, types like supervised learning and unsupervised learning. So this is all, uh, most of this uh, uh, semi-supervised learnings is utilized or applied when there is a less numbers of uh, labeled informations or labeled data to train the network. And last but not the least is that uh, in machine learning, when we apply machine learning, data samples constitute the basic components. Data is the main heart of this machine learning. Uh, that means that the, uh, if we feed a quality, uh, let's say, uh, data, then the output of the machine learning model will be uh, that quality. But uh, if we have uh, low levels of, uh, let's say, if the uh, features and the attributes is filled with some noise uh, on the data samples, then uh, what will come out is some noisy information with an incorrect, uh, 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 let's say, accuracy. And next is that, uh, I want you. Uh, want to present uh, the first machine learning, which is designed uh, uh, for biomedical studies, which is uh, back in 1976, uh, which is called MySCENE. Uh, first of all, uh, machine learning is a uh, subset of this uh, artificial intelligence. And when we mention about expert system, please remember that there is an AI in that. And this MySCENE is the first AI, which is. Uh, uh, model area of studies. Now, MySCENE was an early backward uh, chain expert system uh, that used an AI uh, to identify bacteria uh, bacteria causing uh, severe infection. And uh, those infections like uh, bacteria and meningitis, and the main intention or the main designs of this uh, uh, my scene was that to it will this my scene expert system will have uh, the ability uh, to uh, recommend some antibiotics medicine uh, based on uh, the body mass index and the dosage will be adjusted based on that body mass index and it was written with an old uh, programming language called LISP uh, using a rules a rules based and the rules is composed of 450 rules. Uh, and this mycene is a part of the doctoral uh, 
uh, thesis uh, or dissertation by Edward Strudliff. And uh, in the evaluation, uh, the final evaluation, this might seem uh, receive an exhibit acceptability acceptability rate of 65 percent of accuracy and at the same time uh, they have treated uh, they have uh, evaluated with uh, a panel and compared from the panels of an eight independent uh, physicists uh, by the time then uh, which was comparable to 42.5 uh, percent to 62.5 percent rating given and collected from the evaluators members of five members so that means that this mycene was very successful, but the main question was that uh, uh, does this mycene come actually uh, utilized in the real world? But uh, unfortunately, this mycene was actually never used in practice due to some uh, ethical and legal issues related to the use of uh, computers in medicine by that time. And now the more importantly, the main, the greatest problems or the main reason why uh, we didn't use this uh, uh, my seed is that by the time it was designed, there is no personal computer actually. It was 1970, 1976 and this computer network used to uh, begin from the year 1970s. So during the time we only have this ARPANET. So that's why due to the shortage of resources, we are not able to access these kinds of mycene uh, in the publics. And anyway, since then, the research in the, uh, the applications of machine learning as an expert system in a biomedical studies, especially for cancer uh, research has been increasing dramatically. So here, if you uh, look at closely the year and numbers of population here, uh, the graphics, uh, the chart and those, uh, this uh, table uh, list out the numbers of publications uh, which are happenings on uh, year-wise. In 2010, uh, the numbers of application, which is searched from the electronic database called PubMed and Scopus database, we have 651 in 2010. And after that, in one after one decade, let's go, let's uh, jump to 2020, uh, which is in red color. Over there, we used to uh, list out 5104. Uh, medical research, which is related with the uh, biomedical uh, sciences, applic uh, uh, applications of machine learnings on biomedical sciences uh, of uh, based on this cancer uh, disease. So you may notice that uh, the, the increased rate of this uh, one, the, the increased rate of this public publication from this 2010 to 2020 uh, dramatically is uh, dramatically uh, stood up by 784 percent. That is uh, so alarming. That means that uh, the cancer is one of the highest research area in biomedical science. At the same time, machine learning uh, contributes more the year, uh, <coughs> when the years comes by. And now uh, we have a two, uh, we are in the 2021 uh, March, and here we have seen that in 2021 March, it's only. Uh, to two and a half months, then we can still list it out. Uh, there is a, a 200 and 2,270 uh, articles has already been published in the PubMed and Scopus database, which is uh, almost uh, uh, close to the uh, 12 month publications of the 2018 data that is 2,570 publications. That means that uh, there is a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, um, applications for machine learnings for especially uh, a cancer. Now in these studies, we're going to concentrate on the applications of machine learnings in the cancer studies. Uh, cancer studies means uh, uh, broadly on uh, breast cancer studies. And now uh, I'm going to present that uh, uh, in 2015, uh, Constantin, uh, Const, uh, Constantina uh, et al, a group of uh, uh, researchers, they used to review on the recent uh, 12 decades of research papers uh, and they used to study uh, which models is uh, utilized more and which classify uh, are is applied uh, for these breast cancer studies and all. And uh, what they have found out and what they have come up with is that they have to categorize those existing, uh, those uh, models into three categories. The first category is prediction of cancer susceptibility. And the second category, predictions of cancer recurrence. And the third category, predictions of cancer survival. So these categories are very, very important and very, very broad in their own. 
And predictions of cancer susceptibility also contain the screening uh, with the help of this machine learning. And the second and uh, the middle one, this predictions of cancer recurrence is going to be the, our initiative research, which I'm going to present today. Uh, we have started our uh, breast cancer recurrence predictions with machine learning based on ensemble uh, uh, machine learning. And first of all, uh, I want to uh, present on the abstract, which we uh, abstract of the uh, present paper, which we have published. Uh, first of all, the breast cancer is the most common types of cancer pre uh, prevalent among female cancer uh, patients. And this is as per SPER, the US-based uh, uh, data seed facts uh, that, uh, yes, 2016 based on that. The reason why we, uh, uh, we source on the 2006 is that uh, we, the database which we use right now in MSCI, Mizoram State Cancer Institute is based on 2016 data only. So to, uh, to match that, we need, so we want to apply these uh, adaboos and uh, those assemble machine learning, begging and votings and stacking uh, for this biomedical research based on the MSCI datasets. And for evaluations of the data, we use the breast cancer dataset consisting of 20 attributes and features and containing 575 samples obtained from the Mizoram State Cancer Institute, ISO. And uh, for final evaluation, we use the K-fold cross-validation techniques where we set K is equal to 10 and a standard machine learning evaluators is used uh, and rock curve where used to arrive the results. And from the data set attributes, uh, we rank accordingly to take the coefficient and the, uh, uh, the contributions of its attributes uh, and rank them accordingly so that which, uh, which uh, attributes and which features is uh, contribute most uh, on the uh, outcomes of the classification. Okay, this is uh, some, uh, his, uh, some uh, reports on, from the various uh, uh, newspapers and various uh, fact sheets and various reports from the Cancer uh, Authority. And according to the World Cancer Research Foundation, breast cancer is the second most common cancer in women worldwide with over 2 million new cases diagnosed with 200, 2018 alone. It was so alarming to hear this. So the, uh, the women are vulnerable to this breast cancer, but women are not alone. You will see, I will show you the, the details of the uh, MSCI data set and even men can also suffer from this breast cancer. And according to US National uh, Cancer Institute Surveillance Epidemiology and end result, SEER, uh, the cancer statistic facts in 2015, uh, 124.8, the uh, breast cancer cases has been uh, estimated for every 100,000 women per year. And apart from that, 21.9 uh, dead has been predicted or estimated for every 100,000 uh, uh, women per year. So it was so alarming to hear these kinds of reports. And next, one in 22 women in India suffer from breast cancer. There is a report generated from the Indian Against Cancer 2016. And in USA, one in eight is the statistics report which we received on 2016. That means it was 2.75 times more than the Indian woman. And why we choose this MSCI data? So now from the, up, the most updated report that is the uh, WHO International Agency for Research and Cancer 2020 report uh, and the Times of India and the Hindu used to report that one in every 10 Indians will develop cancer during their lifetime. So this is the reason why we choose India for the research test base. And uh, when we look on Mizoram, uh, in India, Mizoram has the highest, the highest rate in various cancer type, which is reported uh, from 1992 to 2016 study, the Indian State Level Disease Burden Initiative, uh, Initiative Cancer Collaboration, which is published in the lesson on Collegi 2018. So for all this reason, we used to choose uh, to collect some data sets from the uh, MSCI and perform these kinds of tests and analysis based on that uh, MSCI only. Now let us 
at the closer look on the data which is reported from the MSCI. And in this table one, you will see the cancer statistics, which is start from 2009 to 2016. And uh, in 2009, in total, we have 40 females. And if we go down and uh, if you look on 2014, you will notice that uh, something new happens in this ISO. That means th uh, that is that two or two male uh, has been diagnosed with a breast cancer. So we uh, men's are also not free from these breast cancers. And in 2016, uh, two persons is again diagnosed with, this is a new diagnosis, not recurrent, okay? Uh, so uh, among the one to the two, uh, diagnosed uh, with cancer, uh, breast cancer in 2016, two of these men has come in this report. So the total, con the total con confirmed report, uh, which we have uh, collected he uh, here for the evolutions of the R models is 575 samples. And here you will see that uh, during seven years alone, uh, the cancer registry, the breast cancer registry of the Mizoram uh, Cancer Institute has been increased dramatically. That is increased by 250 persons in the seven years alone. So uh, this is how we distribute and we use to pre-process on the data sets uh, which we use. And uh, these data sets going to contain some clinical, uh, clinical data and demographic data, habitual data and comorbid conditions. And the limitations of these data sets is that you will uh, miss out the one of the most important uh, attributes, which is called as the size of the tumors, and you will miss out the uh, records which is taken from the CT scan, the film, the image, and which is uh, very, very important for screening and uh, predictions of the cancer uh, survival the chance. So due to that reason, we used to uh, concentrate on the predictions, predictions of the recurrent. For recurrent data, we can collectively call, uh, we can uh, sequentially uh, analyze three years of data from the MSCI data. And here, uh, among the 700, uh, 575 records, we used to collect 23 uh, features, and we're going to filter out based on the uh, feature simulators. And uh, the recurrence rate uh, of which 20% is uh, being given, uh, assigned with the recurrent uh, positive cases, and 80% uh, diagnosed are uh, without some recurrent uh, uh, records. And here, in the first attribute, we uh, have some uh, the age. The age group uh, ranges from uh, the range used to start from one to 10, and the range one is the age which is below 10, and the age 10, uh, range number 10 is the, uh, the age above 90 uh, years. And sex may be male or female, and literality uh, used to deal with whether the breast cancer is from the left breast or the right breast or uh, both of the breast, and the body mass index is there. And morphology used to deal with the cancer type, uh, uh, from uh, precancerous to the uh, invasive cancers and uh, socioeconomic status, auxiliary limb node and skin development and stage group. Stage group is uh, very important here and stage group can be zero stage and 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B and 3A, 3B, 3C and up to four, uh, stage four. And uh, here some habitual data is there which uh, like uh, serial number 10, cigarette, whether the person is uh, uh, consuming some cigarette, but the limitations of this data set is that how frequent he's consuming. That is what uh, we need to update in the second phase of this research. And tobacco is also the same thing. Alcohol, pan masala, betel nuts uh, are some habitual data. And from this comorbid condition, uh, the subject is being analyzed whether he uh, suffer from uh, the uh, related uh, disease like tuberculosis, hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, asthma, allergy, hepatitis, and others, uh, including AIDS. And the last features is uh, the classification, whether uh, that person, that subject person is uh, suffer, uh, suffer from, uh, who suffer from cancer has, uh, undergone some recurrent uh, activity in the cancer. Uh, so this is all about the data sets which we have collected and pre how we pre-process. And now, uh, based on these uh, 23 uh, features, we're going to uh, evaluate uh, on the uh, evaluators, uh, which is the, uh, let's say, uh, feature selections algorithms, and we used to rank accordingly 
depending on the importance of the features. Now, if you have a closer look on info gain, gain ratio, and chi-square, uh, the last column, the chi-square values is being utilized because of the uh, performance of the chi-square uh, algorithms. So from the chi-square al algorithm, you will see that uh, the up to 20, uh, the features are uh, uh, classified as acceptable for uh, predicting the outcomes of the uh, classification. So see, uh, rank number 21, 22, and 23 features, number 21, 22, and 23 of the data which we have shown has been removed from the uh, data so that we can have uh, uh, let's say uh, we can uh, 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 summarize the features into a much simpler uh, data environment. And now uh, we applied uh, four ensemble machine learning uh, uh, techniques. Number one is the boosting algorithm. And next one is bagging, voting, and stacking. So for boosting, we used to apply various kinds of algorithms and uh, uh, the one algorithm which we have listed down here is the best uh, algorithm, which is for the specific types of classification. And this ensemble itself is a supervised learning, like we have said earlier. And for boosting, J48, uh, J48 comes the best. And for begging, we have uh, J48. And for voting, we have the combinations of the four classification algorithm. There is J48, knife base, uh, uh, multilayer perceptron, and sequential minimal optimization. The combinations of this uh, ensemble uh, stackings is also same as that of voting uh, techniques. Now let us uh, let us uh, see the results. Okay. Here, uh, the results of this classification algorithms is uh, evaluated based on the uh, general evaluation uh, performance evaluations uh, which we use in machine learning. And here. The first uh, performance is the accuracy. The accuracy is the, uh, the measures, the results of the two values and the two positive rate is uh, the two values, which is uh, classified as two. And the false positive rate is the false value, which is uh, classified as false, predicted as false. And persistence is uh, like uh, positive predicted values. And this recalls is the positive, oh, sorry, the, uh, okay. Predictions is the uh, uh, positive uh, predicted values. And this recall is the, uh, it means like how many uh, related uh, items are being selected in this data. And F measures uh, is the measures of the models, uh, how the models is uh, performed, how accurate is the models on the supply data sets. And last, not the least is that, rock curve, which used to call as a rock curve or uh, area on the rock, that is receiver operating characteristics. And it deals with the, uh, this uh, rock area used to depict uh, the uh, threshold between the true positive rate and the false positive rate. Now, if you have a closer look on this uh, ensemble, various ensemble techniques, you have seen that uh, Adebus M1 uh, outperform uh, the other classification algorithm with uh, a little range. Uh, actually, the all the classification algorithm, the techniques which we applied in this ensemble, the four ensemble met met this, uh, met method are uh, uh, almost the same, but some variations is there. So uh, two positive rate is in terms of two positive rate, four positive rate, precision recall, F measures. Uh, you can see that all uh, the best goes to the boosting uh, that is using the Adaboost M1 with the help of J48. But uh, when it comes to rock area uh, here, uh, it, the, uh, the performance of the vote uh, is much better as compared to the rock area. But here, uh, the one evaluators is not enough to uh, make a final conclusions. And to make a final conclusions, we used to add up this performance. At the same time, the error performance of the uh, classification algorithm. So here, if you, uh, if you see this table five, this is the error statistics and here the KPA statistics, which is popular uh, classification, uh, sorry, statistical analysis is there. So at the boost M1 used to score four, uh, 0 0.4371, uh, uh, which is an optimal as compared to the other uh, bagging, stackings and vote. Uh, we can say that uh, from the error statistics, the kappa statistics, the mean absolute errors, and the root mean square errors indicates that the Adaboost M1 becomes the top algorithm, which is ranked 
at the highest with the uh, lowest uh, error statistics. And here, uh, the rock curve has been depicted based on the Weka. And uh, here in this, uh, this rock curve, you have seen that uh, Adebus M1 um, is outperformed by the rock curve that is vote, uh, vote uh, techniques. But the thing is that uh, this uh, rock alone is not a, an evaluator which is used to come up with the conclusions of these papers. So after, uh, 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 and after a careful analysis on its results and its performance and its error rate and its rock curve, then we used to choose these Adebus M1s as the best among this classification algorithm. And now let us move to the conclusions. Uh, from the three evaluators used uh, for the future selections, the stage grouping and the numbers of auxiliary limb node uh, affections are the two significant features, which means that higher the cancer states and limb node affected means higher in re recurrence chances. So that is what we observe in the first. And the second point state that the states of cancer plays a vital role in cancer survival. And therefore, an early screening is highly significant to increase the chance of survival. This is the area uh, where we try to uh, 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 plan our future uh, works on these cancer studies. And the next is that machine learning plays an important role in extracting information contained in the medical database from the n-dimensional spaces. And uh, here we have noticed that resorting to pre-processing, as we have said earlier in machine learning, uh, a quality data, data is required to have a quality output. Therefore, resorting of this processing and attribute selection plays an important role in improving the data, data quality and complexity of the uh, machine learning. And the last but not the least is that the performance of accuracy of this uh, Adebus M1 based on J48 seems to be the best uh, based on the evaluator method applied. But all of these four machine learnings are uh, at the optimal level if we want to use them in uh, uh, ensemble method. And the content of that uh, which we have present is uh, published in an, an advanced in intelligence systems and computing book series in 2023 April. And what I want to share uh, uh, again is that uh, in, relation, in uh, relation with the uh, presentation today, uh, we used to publish uh, one paper recently, uh, which is in June 2020. Uh, it talk, here we talk about the applications of machine learnings and artificial intelligence for COVID-19 uh, pandemic, which is a review. Here we have reviewed on the current existing and the uh, previously uh, conducted research on the Ebola and SARS and those AIDS, infectious and non-infectious disease. Then we uh, finally concluded uh, on the applications of machine learnings. So the main intentions of this research is that to study how, how well the machine learning algorithms is fed into these uh, biomedical studies. So uh, now let us, uh, I want to share you uh, some, a few points of what we have observed uh, using this. Uh, machine learnings and artificial intelligence are uh, such a promising uh, method employed by various healthcare providers. Uh, right now in India also, we have used this machine learning for COVID-19 screening. Uh, and recent papers apply uh, such advanced technology in augmenting the, st the studies uh, from multiple angles, addressing the troubles and challenges while using such algorithm and assisting the, uh, assisting the medical expert in the real world's problem. So as we have said earlier, this expert system is designed in such a way that uh, without replacing the individual, uh, let's say for cancer in oncologies and for uh, COVID-19, there will be some uh, another uh, physicist. It is about, uh, designing an expert system which will uh, give uh, the uh, medical expert a decision support in the fastest uh, in the fastest mode so that is the main reason why we designed this expert system and that comes only with the help of this machine learning and next point is that deep learning is the uh, uh, found to be the most potential uh, robust and advanced over the other existing algorithm and apart from this deep learning, uh, the one of the most popular algorithm which is used in this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic is the uh, decision tree. And the current urgency requires an improved models with high-end performance accuracy in screening and predicting SARS-CoV-2. 
uh, with a different kinds of related disease by analyzing the, clini the clinicals and the demographic informations of the suspect and infected patients. So there are a lot of screening uh, mm, uh, models based on the uh, film uh, image processing, but uh, 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 the, re the, the real things which we need to have is that a high-end performance, uh, performance accuracy in screening. There are a lot of models, but they are not deployed here. The final, finally, we have said that most of the models are not deployed enough. This is the main challenges which we have faced in these applications of machine learning since COVID-19, because there is a model. If that model is not implemented in the real world, then it is uh, a kind of, uh, uh, it was not at, uh, as useful as it should be. And now uh, we want to conclude that in this research or in this review, we want to conclude that the AI and machine learning can significantly improve uh, the treatments, medications, screenings, and predictions, even the forecasting and contact tracing and drugs and vaccine developments uh, for uh, the COVID-19 pandemics and reduce the human interventions. So with this, I will conclude my presentation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Samuel Lenwan Oma for the very well written paper and a wonderful execution. Um, we see we have some questions uh, in the chat box below. And I would also like to remind uh, everyone that if you have any question, you can also type your question right now. Uh, we have one question here. I will uh, read it out and we will call upon Dr. Samuel to answer. Um, so the first question is, sir, I would like to know whether the breast cancer data set other than Mizoram are available. If available, will it be good to combine with such data set with the Mizoram cancer data to have more complex and better cancer data set? Thank you very much, Dr. Samuel, once again. Uh, with that, we have come to the conclusion of our first session for today. Uh, we will have a very short lunch break and we will be back at 1 p.m. Uh, reminder that our next speaker will be Professor R.C. Tiwari. Thank you, thank you everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>